Oracle uh, has been very important to me um, throughout my career. I'm a clinical oncologist at the Royal Mars and specializing in head and neck and thyroid cancer. And actually, it was um, Oracle supported me through my early stages of research. Um, Peter Miss Evans particularly uh, very supportive um, of us taking through research within the head and neck side and also the thyroid side, which is what I'm going to talk about now. So yes, I um, was very uh, shocked to hear the news, um, but uh, he was a, a superb um, advocate for uh, the research for head and neck cancer. And, and as you say, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, do him uh, justice and honor his um, memory uh, through this ongoing charity. So what I'm gonna do briefly is to um, just um, raise the profile of thyroid cancer, which does come under the umbrella of uh, head and neck cancers. Um, and uh, we are seeing increasing numbers of thyroid cancer. And what is quite pleasing to see is that actually uh, there's been quite a lot of development and changes in the management of thyroid cancer over the last couple of years, particularly. <coughs> so I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the things which I think align very much to the principles of the Oracle um, research aims. <coughs> so certainly reducing treatment intensity in our early stage uh, disease and reducing therefore uh, the consequences of uh, some of the treatment and some of the side effects that we, le we, we leave our patients with. I'll briefly talk about some of the molecular um, research that we're doing at the Royal Marsden Hospital and Institute of Cancer Research and, and how that has led on to um, a new targeted therapies uh, which have really revolutionized the treatment of advanced thyroid cancers uh, in the last uh, few years. And finally, I will mention a little bit about the management of anaplastic thyroid cancer, which is an incredibly aggressive, in fact, probably the most aggressive solid tumor that we see in, in, um, in humans. And uh, thankfully, um, we are beginning to see some progress in the management of that devastating uh, diagnosis. So looking at early uh, disease first of all, um, we really have seen a, a, a huge um, uh, explosion of, of thyroid uh, cancer uh, worldwide. Um, so in, uh, when I first started out as a consultant around 16 years ago, uh, we were talking about um, around 1,200 uh, cases um, a, a year, and now we're seeing um, much more, uh, towards three, three and a half thousand uh, new cases each year. So it's really exploded uh, in um, numbers. Um, we, it still remains, however, a rare cancer, and so we do need to bang the drum for thyroid cancer. It's still only 1% of all uh, cases, um, but the, the trend is up. But the trend is up mainly for early disease. And so I think the, one of the um, challenges for those of us that treat thyroid cancer is to make sure that we don't over-treat our patients. We are seeing many very small, uh, low-risk thyroid cancers that will have no impact on a patient's um, mortality. And therefore, we really do need to concentrate on reducing the intensity um, of our um, treatment so that we're not putting patients through unnecessary um, morbidity or a risk of <coughs> side effects. Um, so one of the areas that we're particularly focusing in on uh, worldwide, but also nationally, um, particularly, is, is how beneficial is radioactive iodine in low-risk uh, thyroid cancer? Can we reduce the amount we give, and can we omit even the radioactive iodine? And also, what about the surgery? Can we reduce the amount of surgery uh, that we put our patients through uh, safely uh, without affecting the outcomes? And Professor Day Kim, who is one of my uh, consultant surgical colleagues at the Royal Marsden, has designed and set up and now opened um, a randomized um, uh, trial within the surgical world uh, for thyroid uh, cancer, randomizing low-risk uh, thyroid cancers to having either just half of the thyroid removed or the total uh, complete uh, thyroid uh, thyroidectomy. And this has been a question that the whole world of thyroid cancer specialists has been asking uh, for many years, but no one has been able to set up a trial uh, to do that. And, and within the UK, within the NHS, um, we are uniquely positioned to be able to do this. So this is a big step forward, and we really hope that this will finally put the question uh, to bed about how much surgery um, low-risk thyroid cancers really need. 
We've already had uh, two very large um, um, multi-center national studies uh, led by colleagues from Newcastle um, with uh, Ujjal Malik, uh, my colleague, uh, oncology colleague from there, who set up uh, the HILO study within the UK, which was swiftly followed um, by the Estimable study in France. And these both uh, published uh, al almost 10 years ago now. Um, and reduce the amount of iodine that we give our patients, uh, reduced it by about a third. So we're already reducing um, the amount of uh, radioactive iodine we're giving patients. And we're now uh, moved on from that and we have the ION study, again led by Ujjal, um, that has uh, looked at whether or not we can omit uh, radioiodine in our early stage patients completely. And we've just finished recruiting to that and hopefully we'll publish it soon. And the French have also done a study, but in a much more, uh, a much smaller uh, population of patients. And that has shown some interesting and, and promising uh, uh, results that no radioiodine, it was non-inferior to those receiving radioiodine in low risk cases. So we're hoping that the results from ION in the UK will build on that and um, expand the population of patients that we can omit radioactive iodine treatment. Uh, so this is a big step forward. Moving more towards the advanced disease, um, as with all cancers, um, we're aiming to individualize our treatment uh, plans for patients, to much more treat um, your patient in front of you, uh, what their cancer is, how their cancer is behaving, how their cancer is likely to behave, and how it's likely to respond to particular treatments. And to do that, there's been an explosion in our knowledge and understanding of the molecular basis of these cancers. So the genetic side of the cancers, the, the, uh, the alterations that occur at the molecular level, uh, which then, um, which then uh, uh, determine how that particular tumor behaves. And we have decided to uh, look at this uh, in thyroid cancer, uh, which always tends to lag behind many of the more common um, cancers because of uh, funding, because of getting numbers together. But what we're aiming to do really is to really take the tissue from the tumor, that's a thyroid um, that's been removed, um, and really to try to look at various aspects of the uh, biology of the tumor to get a better understanding and a better accuracy of uh, how this, this tumor is going to behave. Uh, perhaps we can adjust the treatment intensity based on that, and also to obviously develop uh, novel treatments directed at particular abnormalities within the uh, genetics of the tumor. And this is uh, uh, a bit of a, a busy slide, but what we can do is without um, actually taking invasive biopsies of a patient's tumor, which may not always be accessible, we can also look at what's happening in the, uh, to the biology of the tumor, to the genetics of the tumor by, uh, by, in, a, in a blood sample. So a liquid biopsy where we uh, take a blood sample and actually look at circulating tumor DNA, uh, which again gives us this window uh, on what's happening in the, in the tumor itself and perhaps gives us an idea of how well we're doing with the um, uh, treatment that we're giving um, and also why a treatment may not be uh, continuing to be useful, why the tumor has become resistant to it. And this is work that uh, we've been doing with uh, David Allen and Sam Chan, uh, with support from um, various charities, including the Emmy Coates Thyroid Research Fund, Arco Valeno Cancer Trust, and the Royal College of Surgeons. And prior to this, in the build-up to these um, studies, Oracle uh, was also key in supporting some <coughs> of these studies. Uh, and so what we're about to launch is a multi-center trial um, for, so for, for five centers throughout uh, the UK uh, where we're going to be collecting uh, these liquid biopsies at various time points throughout the patient's um, uh, treatment uh, from diagnosis right up to advanced disease uh, and looking at how this understanding of the biology uh, can uh, change our approach and individualize our approach for our patients. So it's pretty exciting. And alongside this more research, uh, uh, early stage uh, research, there have been quite a few uh, developments which have led to changes within the clinical practice in the last couple of years. So again, based on understanding the biology, understanding the genomic alterations of the tumors, we now have some treatments um, directed specifically uh, against um, pathways that are 
activated inappropriately within these cancers due to genetic uh, alterations. And uh, so in anaplastic thyroid cancer now, where we now understand that almost half of anaplastic thyroid cancers have a particular mutation, the BRAF B600E uh, mutation, and we have effective uh, drug combinations that can uh, make a big difference in controlling uh, that disease. And that has, has, has really uh, been um, remarkable to see some of the responses uh, in our patients for that. We're still not getting rid of this cancer, but at least we are able to perhaps control it a little bit better and give our patients a little bit uh, better quality li of life. Also in medullary thyroid cancer, one of our rarer, uh, again, rarer types of thyroid cancer, we now have drugs that are targeted specifically against the RET uh, mutated um, uh, gene within medullary. And these, when these treatments are specifically directed against a particular uh, alteration, it means that we hopefully have far fewer side effects. The, the, the drugs are um, directed at the pathway and uh, fewer off-target um, uh, effects mean fewer side effects for our patients with hopefully better uh, responses and outcomes. Um, and we're also seeing other alterations such as NTRAC and ALK fusions uh, within our thyroid cancers which we can now target. So again, a big step forward only within the last uh, 12 to 24 <coughs> months. And this is just an example of um, a patient with an anaplastic thyroid cancer. And sorry for the uh, slightly shocking picture, but I do want to just try to explain um, how these targeted therapies can be very effective. So you can see this very large tumor which is extended out through the skin uh, of the neck of this patient. And you can see on the cross-sectional imaging, so that's a slice uh, at the level of the voice box of the Adam's apple, where you can see the tumor extending outside of the skin. And also this is a slice looking, if you took a slice through me like this and looking at um, me, you can see the airway here, the collarbones here, um, and the big tumor bulging outside. And standard chemotherapy has not been very useful uh, for these tumors, unfortunately. And I'm not going to show much data except for this, just to try to um, explain what's happening. But um, these are all, each line represents a patient. Uh, and these patients um, were found to have uh, this mutation that I've talked about, including the patient that you've just seen. And anything below the line is a shrinkage of the disease. And this is um, percentages coming down here from naught at baseline down to 100%. And you can see in, in this early data, or, or, so early but exciting data, on this combination uh, of drugs, there's significant um, reduction in the volume of um, the tumor size in these patients. And it's durable response as well. So this is weeks um, along the x-axis here going up to 140. So, you know, we want to be able to shrink patients' tumors, but we also want, you know, to have a, du a durable response. Uh, and this is all um, uh, uh, information and uh, progress in what was before and still is, but is, you know, now we have some glimmers of hope in a, in a very aggressive tumor. And immunotherapy as well. We hear a lot about immunotherapy, and you'll hear more from Kevin later. But immunotherapy in, in thyroid cancer is beginning also to show some uh, uh, encourage, encouraging um, uh, outcomes, uh, particularly in anaplastic uh, cancer, in combination with perhaps some of the more common drugs that we use as well. So I think from a thyroid cancer um, point of view, there has been a lot of progress in the management of it, and particularly in, in de-escalating uh, in early stage disease and reducing the toxicities that we uh, impose on our patients. Um, but also uh, for the advanced disease, we're having more personalized targeted therapies uh, with, with the aim of improving outcomes uh, as well as uh, maintaining quality of life. So there's definitely um, um, progress, uh, and um, I'm looking forward to continuing um, the research on the thyroid side with my uh, colleagues uh, on the unit. And thank you again for your interest and continued support for our Thank you.